Are you looking for a way to patch and repair your plaster walls? In this video, I'm sharing how I patched our plaster walls and the results are amazing. This all started when we decided to renovate our bathroom, so that required removing tile. As you can see, some areas did need to be patched with drywall, and we're going to hurry and talk about that first. I'm having to shim out the walls a little bit to be able to add the drywall in, so it'll be more level rather than putting kind of two sheets of drywall. As you can see, I've done it over here. This one's ready to go. That one has quite a few shims and this one only has one that was needed to be the certain level of the actual walls currently. I know that's gonna make my walls not square, but that's what I'm working with. So that's what I have to continue. So after that, we are going, well, I'm gonna plaster over this wall or walls. There's more than one. Oh. And for the sink, I did add the brace, cut this out so that way I can reuse it. So now I will just screw that back on and start plastering all those wonderful holes. If you don't need to patch holes with drywall, you can skip ahead to the part where I talk about just patching with the plaster mix, but I did have to cut this out. So I used a razor blade and marked out where I needed to be cutting this drywall piece and drywall is super easy to cut you use it with a razor blade and then you can normally break it but because this was particular I had to use a razor blade very carefully and after that I placed it into place to make sure everything fit and then I put in those shims that I was talking about once I was happy with how level the new sheet of drywall was with those shims, I could install it. There was one area that I did have to use liquid nails to get it to adhere to the wall. This was because that back wall is actually brick, so I didn't have anything to screw the new drywall into. After that, I scraped the walls with a scraper to make sure we had all, all the residue from the tiles removed. After that, I needed to tape the joints of the newly added drywall pieces, but also this cut piece of plaster just to make sure that there was no seams. This allows it to have a smooth, crisp finish. And I am just using mesh tape here, and then I am applying some mud to give it some adhere, something to adhere to, and then this will stick in place. Now, before we go any farther, we do need to talk about mixing the plaster. And we're gonna pause this right here because I need to talk about the issues that I had with this. So the first time that I did it, I just used the plaster of Paris with the water and mixed it according to the instructions. This set up so quickly. It was shocking how quickly it set up. You had to be able to put something on within minutes or you had this mess, which makes sense because that's what's used to sculpting with it. So I went on a search on YouTube and I found this wonderful video, I'm going to link to it, uh, where they talked about how to patch plaster walls quickly. And so that's what I did. I followed the instructions and so I mixed the plaster of Paris like you normally would, but then you add in the drywall compound with it and this allows it to not set up so quickly but it gives it the features of the plaster where you can sculpt the wall or the drywall mud or the plaster mud sorry onto the wall afterwards now this set up quickly too a lot faster than the drywall compound that you normally buy from the hardware store but i loved that you did not i did not at all have to sand at all on this so i loved this and i hope to use it again the only downside is that it sets up quickly you have to make sure that you clean everything in between your mixings and so you can't just remix a new batch 
in the same tub, you have to clean it out completely or that next mix will set up super fast. So just some notes with that. Um, so yeah, watch that video if you're interested in it. But yeah, I'm just gonna now hurry and show you. I, we've been kind of going through this where I am adding this plaster mix to the wall and we'll just kind of go through it. So let's read and talk about this wall. So it still needs more coats, obviously, because of how bad this wall is shaped. But I want to show you this because of that technique that I told you about that I was using. So like there's some spots here that after it start, starts to dry slightly, I can take that spot, for example, and smooth it out. The fact that you can smooth this out without sanding is pretty cool. See, look, here's another right there. It's pretty sweet. So that's just coat number one. I have to apply some more coats, so then I'll use that technique as I get to more of the finish, but it's looking so much better. Now you're probably wondering, cause this is my last coat on this wall. Now these walls were really, really bad. I wanna note that one more time. And so you're probably wondering how many coats did it take me to do this? And I think it took me four altogether with this finished coat. And normally your walls won't be this bad, but because of all the notches and nicks out of this wall, it did take longer and then it also took a little bit longer for some areas to dry as well but the nice thing is is that this dries pretty quickly i it did take me a couple weeks to get through all of this because it's a lot of walls normally you'd be patching just a little area but all you have to do is just apply the plaster to the area and again only mix a little bit I used little cups, little kid cups, and dumped in two scoops of the plaster of Paris, and then one scoop water, mixed that together, and then a couple globs of the drywall mud, and that was the perfect amount for me to apply in the time I had before it would start setting up. So all I'm doing here is just smoothing out those lines and just being careful not to uh, press too much because you want to just get rid of those lines but remember again I showed you that technique where after it sat for about 10 minutes you can come back and just take the tape knife and remove any of those lines that you're seeing Now, when you're on a finished coat and any other ones, you are going to kind of get to where you're happy with how it's turning out. And then you're going to take a damp sponge and it's going to be very damp. You want to make sure you wring this out and you're going to use this to feather out the edges of where you just applied the plaster. So this is just to give you a smooth feathered finish so that way you have no harsh lines. And it doesn't take a lot to do this and you're only going to do it after the plaster has set for about 10 minutes and then after that you'll also take the scraping knife and just gently scrape out any sort of lines that you have you're just making this plaster work for you and you're sculpting it to give you a beautiful finished wall finish the walls i'm going to show you how nice they look now and I'm not too worried about the shower ones. Those are gonna be covered up. The ones that I'm worried about is more of this right here, cause this is gonna be exposed. Plus up there, I filled some holes on that guy. I patched some of the ceiling cause there was some stuff going on up there. I patched that area as well. So now I have to prime everything and then I will paint. I will not be painting where the tub, the tile is gonna be around the tub. But I'm going to paint all the walls, primer, and then paint. And then we can start adding the tile because the walls are ready. If you're curious, here is what our bathroom looks like now. And you cannot even tell that this wall was patched. 